periods of the year, you know, such as every quarter, you know, for a week where you're eating a plant-based diet or you're restricting meat. You're basically giving your body a break from being in that constant anabolic state. And I think that the, the carnivore diet causes a lot of people to miss out on some of those elements. And then if you look at the blood work of, uh, um, you know, a doctor who does Sean the carnivore Baker. diet, he publishes blood work online. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what else is, is going on with him from a health standpoint, but, but, you know, he had really high blood glucose and really low testosterone and some things that suggest that it might not be healthy to eat just meat, you know, and, and did he have even, really low testosterone? That's interesting. It was like 200 to 300. It was pretty, really? It's pretty low. It was like, that's it's like, really low. Yeah. Diagnosable hypogonadism combined with, uh, uh you know, almost like borderline diabetes. Did, right? did he, and, is it possible to do it after a workout? Uh, he does a lot of rowing. Uh, sure, like real high would intensity. suppress your testosterone that significantly. It would increase your HSCRP and your inflammatory markers, right? Which is why you mm-hmm. never want to you never want to go to a doctor for a heart checkup after you've done a workout because they're going to tell you you're going to have a heart attack based on the levels of HSCRP. That you right. Have. But uh, you know it, that blood work is just one example, and I don't want to pretend like that one example you know is going to going to paint with a broad brush the entire right. carnivore diet phenomenon. But I just, I think that unrestricted protein intake and unrestricted meat intake probably has an accelerated aging effect on the body. And well, here's the difference. Dr. Ron Rosedale is a doc who has some good information on that. He's got a good video online. What's going on with this carnivore diet is there's no science behind it. There's a lot of people that are giving it a shot. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are finding good results. But I find that yeah. people, when they just change things, there's a period of time where they say they feel great. And I, that is absolutely mm-hmm. 100% a placebo effect. It's the same thing as like a vegan diet. You feel fantastic. Right. And you know, name me, well, name me one population, one blue zone that eats meat like and nothing else. Right? And there's, there's actually very few centenarians who are purely vegan for their entire life. Because you can, if you don't do it the right way, build up fatty acid deficits, amino acid deficits, creatine is one you mm-hmm. don't get, vitamin B12, uh, DHA. But at least there's uh, been studies taurine. on vegans. Right. There's been a lot of studies on vegans. And th- we know that if you eat uh, like E3 Live, you, mm-hmm. you know, you, you. Oh, you can you can supplement. There's yeah. a lot of really smart vegans. I mean, there's guys like yeah. Rich Roll. Right. Like they do things the right way. Right. right. It's, it's laboratory. It's, it's a lot easier to just eat it's a piece of meat. Li- right. Yeah, it's very to, to, to get some of the B12 and some right. of the other amino acids you're trying to free up by right. soaking and sprouting and fermenting, right. which my wife does a lot of. It, it, but I watch her like she she's in the kitchen like three hours a day making vegetables bioavailable. Is your you know, wife it vegan? takes her hours to make sourdough bread, you know, to actually make a bread where the gluten is pre-digested and it's actually healthy and the glycemic index is lower. She's not vegan. She's just a rancher girl and she likes to do you know, kind of we, stuff we like have that. goats and chickens and, and we eat meat. But she she's very into like an ancestral preparation of vegetables, you mm-hmm. know, deactivating a lot of these these stressors that Dr. Stephen Gundry talks about. And, you know, before we podcast, we we're talking about Tom Brady and how he does like a no nightshade, no tomato, no potato. You know, and, and I'd rather eat those things, but actually figure out a way to render them more digestible and mm-hmm. friendlier to the human body. Yeah, that's the uh, other thing, too, when people talk about food that has protein in it. Um, you know, like broccoli has so much protein. True. Not really bioavailable, you though. a shit ton of broccoli. Yeah. It's yeah. just not the same. Your body yeah. doesn't absorb it the same way it does a grass-fed ribeye steak. Yeah. Your body absorbs that protein instantly. It exactly. knows exactly what yeah. it is. Yeah. By the way, there, there was a study that just came out about stem cells. They found that carnosine, which you find in copious amounts in, in a grass-fed ribeye steak, with blueberry extract enhanced your stem cell production. I mean, it was a hugely significant number. I don't remember the exact percentage, but but this combination of polyphenols and flavanols mm. with meat is a good combo. That's why when I did the carnivore diet, or not the carnivore diet, that's why I was when I was eating meat, I was doing lots of salads. I was doing lots of, I, I had like wild blueberry extract powder. Mm. I had these vegetable powders. You know, I was doing a lot of big salads for lunch flavanols, polyphenols, any of that. Yeah. Uh, same thing with the high saturated fat diet. A high saturated fat diet, like the whole coconut oil thing, is highly inflammatory in the absence of plant polyphenols and flavanols, which is why if you're doing a high fat ketotic diet, 
it needs to be a plant rich, high fat ketotic diet. Otherwise, avocados, it's inflammatory. Things along those lines. You can get a lot of your fats. Well, from I avocados. mean, avocados, yes, but I'm talking about more like you know, doing you know, coconut oil and butter, and you know, your avocado chocolate pudding, and all these things. You know, your, your ketogenic fat bombs and all these recipes that are out there. But, but you got to eat a spinach. lot. You got to eat a lot of plants. Right. And even in the animal kingdom, you, know, you see animals when they rip up another animal, like a carnivorous animal. They're eating the intestines and they're mm -hmm. eating a lot of the organs that are chock full of what? Grass, right. plants, sure. herbs, whatever that omnivorous animal that the carnivorous animal is eating. Pre-digested so, exactly. in a lot of cases. Exactly. Um, when you're talking about carnivorous diets, uh, the, the real issue that I have with it is there's almost no research other than Dr. Baker doing those uh, tests on himself, which yeah. according to you are not very promising. I, didn't, I have some I friends that are right. trying it. Um, my friend uh, Jordan Peterson, his daughter had some serious anti, uh, some serious um, uh, immune system uh, issues, autoimmune disorders. And uh, like to the point where she's had a, she's, I believe she's like 30, 31. Mm -hmm. She's had a hip replaced. She's about to get uh, one of her uh, ankles replaced. Like serious arthritis, real problems. The only yeah. thing that's been able to clear that up is meat. Yeah. Just a pure meat diet. Right. So it, with some people, but she I, might I, have some I, I wouldn't say outrageous that... allergic reaction to plants. I mean, right. there might be something I in don't her. think the meat wasn't the medicine, no, no, probably no. the elimination exactly. of whatever she that's eliminated. What I'm saying. Yeah. She might have some sort of a, uh, a real serious problem, uh, some sort of um, uh, allergic reaction to some plants yeah. or to gluten and uh, yeah. maybe a bunch of different things. That's the way things. a lot of these diets are, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's, it's the elimination, yes. not, not the magic of just yeah. eating meat. I mean, but Sean Baker keeps going on and on about how meat heals and meat this and meat that, all carnivorous diet, and, you know, all these people are trying yeah. it. Like, man. It's got a lot of good stuff going for it, but but restriction of plant matter, in my opinion, long term is not a good idea. And eating meat all the time long term is not necessarily a good idea. And eating only plants with the absence of some meat-based protein is for a lot of populations not that great of an idea. Yeah, well, that's and, the point is that m yeah. for most people – you're, you're going to have to experiment a little bit to figure out what works best for you. And there are people that, especially if you use E3 Live and algae and get your B12 vitamins and your fat-soluble vitamins, you can live off a of vegan diet. It can be done. But you mm -hmm. really have to be careful about it. Mm -hmm. But then there's other people where they can't. And, and, and you really have to figure out what the fuck is going on it's with your own too. body. The but this whole... carnivore thing, to me, is kind of tweaking me out because I just don't... It's like they, they start talking about the... the, the the, the, the poisons and t phytotoxins and all these things that are in plants that are bad for you. I'm like, okay. But a, the, the, the issue yeah, with that a is... It's mild hormetic exercise is bad for you. Sunlight's bad exactly. for you. Exactly. All that stuff can kill you because it's a hormetic stressor. Is that your body yeah. responds to that in a positive way. They even show that some of the, some of the rodents outside of Chernobyl are living longer from the radiation. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying like go go move your cabin out next I mean, to a nuclear move. disaster website, but the idea is that's a hormetic stressor, right. right? Like mild amounts of UVA and UVB 